It's Platt, and today we hit the Sparks Nevada. That's next on Platt's Beer of the Week. So the particular beer we have today comes to us from Revision Brewing. It is Disco Ninja. Now, quick little note, I caught a little blurb on the website, and if you get pretty much a magnifying glass on this can, you can see there's a little side note that this is a, I don't want to call it a collaboration brew, but they do give props to a company called Shoe Tree Brewing. Basically, they're saying that they'd give them an assistance on the recipe, but this is not like a regular collaboration. Generally, you'll see both names, you know, one maybe on top of the other, side by side, or, you know, a clear clearly denoting that another brewery is involved. This is more just kind of a subtle hint on it. So just to let you know that um, a little bit on Revision Brewing. Revision Brewing was founded in uh, Sparks, Nevada in 2017 by a gentleman named Jeremy Warren and four other investors, co-workers, co-owners. I'm not sure the technical term, but four other people were involved. Um, actually, Jeremy's history goes a little further back and in a sense, I guess, maybe revisions. Jeremy had co-founded a brewery called Knee Deep Brewing based in Auburn, California. Uh, I don't know where they're distributed. I know they're distributed here in Nevada and I presume the rest of the kind of the West Coast. Uh, haven't tried any of their beers. They have some interesting concepts and some really cool labels. We'll kind of touch on that in a little bit. Uh, anyway, Jeremy uh, decided in 2015 to leave Knee Deep. He sold his stake in the company to his partner, was wanting a little more freedom. Uh, I understand that as someone who's had partners in the alcoholic beverage business, um, you generally have a lot of alpha type personalities that will clash, and so sometimes uh, a divorce is necessary. Anyway, Jeremy took the proceeds uh, from the sale of, of uh, his stock and turned it into Revision Brewing. Now, originally, Revision was supposed to be based in Sacramento. Not sure what happened. Uh, there were applications that maybe there were some uh, connections to Knee Deep and Sparks, so they ended up moving to Sparks, Nevada, and opening in March of 2017. So they're not even, at the time of this taping, February of 2021, they're not even quite four years old yet. So again, a very young brewery, but already uh, kind of making a name for themselves. Uh, actually did not take them long to make a name for themselves. In uh, spring of 2018, they won silver and gold for IPA and double IPA categories at the World Beer Festival, uh, something I think only four of the breweries have done. And considering the brewery was a year old at that time, quite an accomplishment and, of course, a big moment for the brewery. Really got their uh, name out there. Um, that first year, 2017, they produced only about 5,600 barrels of beer. I want to say they're shooting for here in the near future, 20,000 years. So roughly a fourfold increase over four years. Real nice growth for the brewery. Uh, good for those guys. Um, Revision has two locations, the main brewery and tap room located in Sparks. And they have what they call the Pignic, P-I-G-N-I-C, Pignic Pub and Patio located in the Riverwalk area of Reno. Uh, if you've never been to Reno before, it's a weird, funky little city, real cool. Uh, unfortunately, don't go right now. We're still in lockdown, but maybe here in two or three years, our governor uh, will open us back up. And when you do check out Reno, the Truckee River runs through the main part of the city, and uh, real cool restaurant shops, stuff like that along there. Go check it out if you're in the area. Uh, let's talk about their beers real quick. Uh, all their beers are in can or tap. I don't think they do anything bottles except for their barrel program, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, I really kind of dig the artwork. Uh, they've gone like a lot of breweries uh, to the cans. Several reasons for that. Uh, economics and also uh, you're not having light pollution get to your beer. But they've always had cool labels on their beers. And I think that dates back to Knee Deep. I don't know who Jeremy hires for his graphics, uh, graphic artists who are, but I think they do really cool work. Um, so there's that going for them. Um, if you caught me lately, I've kind of been ranting on some of these breweries just have way too many IPAs, in my uh, opinion. Um, I hate to pick on revision, but they are the prime example of this. Uh, this particular beer, the Disco Ninja, is in there, what they call... N.E. Northeast or New England, you know, some people interpret it different. But anyway, Northeast Hazies. 
uh, generally Northeast Hazy IPAs are the, one of the trendier beers, but it can be IPAs, double IPAs, triple IPAs, pale ales. Um, anyway, I went, went looking through this category, and I quit counting in the 20s. They just, it seems like an endless line of these beers, and I just, I can't imagine, besides maybe a few hardcore fans, what, what I'm really interested in is I would love to talk to their distributor, you know, when they come to them, hey, we got another, you know, New England Hazy. Oh, great, I haven't sold the last one you gave me, but all right. Uh, I, I've gotten to the point, though, with this, I understand brewers are artists, and, art, you know, some artists use watercolors, some use oils, some use chalk, some use crayon. Uh, so I get it. It's just, to me, I just don't see the, once you get past 20, I don't see why 22 or 24 makes a difference. Uh, next is a series they do that I find quite interesting. It's called the Revenge Series. They have uh, a series of beers where each beer highlights an individual hop. And they, they call it, you know, like Amarillo Hops has Amarillo Revenge, Simcoe Revenge, Citro Revenge. And I think it's a neat idea because especially in the Pale Ale IPA World Order, generally those beers are produced with, you know, more than one style of hops in each beer. So you could, you know, if you're a hardcore beer fan, you could pick up, oh, that, you know, you have Amarillo on the nose or Cascade, you know, bitterness or whatever. But it's really kind of hard to tell. This is interesting because I'd love to have a can of the Amarillo Revenge by a can of the Citra Revenge and then taste these on. Oh, okay. Because it's what they do the smell test on hops, but you have to really taste them to truly uh, appreciate it. So I thought this was a very interesting series. Uh, next is something called RBL. That's a regular guy beer. I've talked about that uh, recently. I think it's great that these breweries do, do that. This is a 5% alcohol by volume uh, session type beer. Uh, again, I think it's important to get them in the door and then maybe you get them to try different things. Now, one of the things you probably won't get the Miller Lite drinker to try is their Dr. Lupulin. Uh, lu lupulin. Part. It's not quite as easy to say. That is the lupulin gland that is in hops. That's a reference to that. Uh, that is what provides the magic when we throw hops into the boil. Uh, this particular beer is a triple IPA, 11.3% alcohol by volume, what you would definitely refer to as a big boy beer. Uh, it's the last number, though, that really sticks out. IBU is 133. That's right. We went triple digits and well into the triple digits. Um, I'd be interested to try this beer just, you know, because I, I, I will get adventurous every once in a while. I just can't believe this is something you'd have two or three of, or that would just be something you could, that easy of a drinker. I, I get it from, I guess, a brewer standpoint. Hey, let's push boundaries, and I'm all for that. I just can't believe, I, I can't imagine this is something that too many people would find really drinkable. Uh, next, though, is a beer that may not be that drinkable either, but something that piques my interest is more on the malt guy, this is more kind of the other extreme. Uh, this is part of their barrel program, and it's called uh, Liquid Contrast. It comes in at 15.1% alcohol by volume. That is the definition of a big boy beer. Um, it is aged 16 months in bourbon barrels and is flavored with cocoa nibs and vanilla beans. Sounds to me like a really great winter warmer. You'll definitely go feel the alcohol burn. Uh, it's probably a fairly thick beer, viscous beer, uh, hops, you probably aren't going to notice on this thing. Uh, to me, this is something I would like to drink at a real nice steakhouse or having a real nice meal instead of a glass of port or a big red wine. ABV wise are similar, so you know, you're not losing or really gaining anything either way as far as ABV goes. And to me, I think that would be, you know, again with that vanilla and the cocoa, I think it'd be almost like a liquid dessert. Um, just my opinion. Well, before we try this particular beer, though, let's check out the stats. All right, today I thought I'd talk to you about growlers. Um, if you've been to any brew pubs or your local brewery or whatever, you may see these. Uh, maybe someone gave them to you as a gift or whatever. Um, this particular one my roommate got from Black Eagle Brewery in Black Eagle, Montana. Um, anyway, it's great. Like I said, these are cool gifts. They generally come in the half gallon size, but there's a little variation on the size. Um, what's great about these is, you, is depending on the jurisdiction, a lot of times they'll let you take draft beer to go, which is always a good idea in my world. Uh, but where it plays a real important part today 
is again at the time of this uh, recording we're still well in the pandemic a lot of places are still shut down or only partially open a lot of these breweries or nearly all these breweries had opened before the pandemic and and a lot of the business plan was hey the tap room we get people in house we we don't have to deal with the distributor we sell straight to our customers and we could sell sell them depending on the jurisdiction you know just regular tap beers uh you can sell them growlers to go some to go but it's generally you got them in house and you got to interact with your customer well because of restrictions now that's really not a viable option but one of the things some of the states are allowing is growlers to go or curbside refill you could just drive by your local brewery in some jurisdictions and have them fill up, up for you and you hit the road which i think is really cool and it's really helpful to these breweries that are struggling now we've lost a brewery in las vegas it, it breaks my heart to see that kind of stuff a um, couple suggestions you know maybe if you're having a couple's night and then you know the other couple drinks beer you're having a dinner or whatever pick up a growl or something to share you know you know uh, kind of open other people to beer if uh, it's a boy's day you can uh you know if you live in a large metro area like i do in las vegas maybe somebody picks up a growler from this brewery somebody picks up a growler from that brewery and uh, and you kind of have your own little mini beer festival of all the local beers. But it's a great way to help out your local brewery, have fresh beer at home, because unfortunately, even if you go out, there's so many restrictions on the mask. It's not fun to go out, so uh, stay in with friends. So anyway, pick up a growler, help out your local brewery. Well, enough about that. Let's drink some Disco Ninja. Well, that is definitely hazy. We get not quite a finger head. Oh, plenty, plenty of hops on the nose. We <laughs> that one uh, you can't deny. Let's give her a taste. That is nice. That got a nice hop bitterness, but that kind of almost cleans the palate. A little of that citrusy note. Um, I do get. A little small malt sweetness initially. This is a very reasonable IPA. This again, a nice simple IPA. I'm I'm actually a fan of. It's just it's become an arms race with the hops, unfortunately. But this nice, well executed, uh, hazy IPA. Again, I get you know these beers are actually you know more malty. It's just they a lot of times that malt gets masked by you know by the hops but a little malt sweetness a uh, little body to this which I, I i like the hops are nice they're crisp um i do get that kind of uh resiny hop thing that uh you know again provides balance it, it, all this stuff should be about balance doesn't always work out that way but i think it's nice well executed uh New England style hazy IPA and uh, Disco Ninja. <laughs> I love the can, I love the name. So I think we've ended up finding a pretty good little beer. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or beers that you would like me to try, please leave them in the comment section or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.